Welcome back to our series on Plato's Republic. Uh, in this episode, I will be finishing up book three of the Republic and spend a little more time discussing the nature of uh, education, specifically musical education and its relation to physical education and the way in which physical education is at the service of uh, the musical education that it, that it has received. So there's an ordering to uh, education. And this is something that I think we all intuitively understand, even if we don't fully understand the concepts of musical education and physical education, we intuitively understand that to be formed requires a previous formation. So to, to be willing to submit yourself to a type of training, suppose you're, you're training for a marathon or something, you might be fully committed to wanting to, to complete this marathon. And you print out your, uh, your, your, your running program and you, you see, okay, this is an 18 week program. You know, in these days I have to run these miles at, at this type of effort and, and what have you. And so you have, you have this goal to, to engage in this training but there's no way that you can uh, conduct that training unless you have some prior training. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that you need to have prior running experience, although in the case of marathon, that's probably true. But what I mean is there needs to be a type of training that leads you to execute the physical training. Um, and, and this is, this is uh, often actually discussed if you've ever read running. I've, I've, read, I've read a handful of uh, marathon running books. And early on, one of the things they talk about is this, this idea of you know, having the, the drive or the determination. It's partly a psychological challenge. Uh, marathons are physically taxing, uh, but there's something uh, mentally taxing about them. Uh, there's something about the fact that you're doing the same thing for so long that is both uh, a challenge physically and mentally. And the, the way that you are able to train for that joint challenge, that dual challenge, is going to um, be by um, both of those, uh, um, both those, those, those aspects. And so you need a type of, uh, putting it very straightforward, you need a type of determination or a type of character if you're going to commit yourself to a successful um, execution of this 18-week training program. Uh, many times you, you've, you've probably found yourself in the, the situation of, oh, I want to learn the guitar or I want to learn this instrument or I want to learn this foreign language. Um, or I want to read Plato's Republic, or I want to do this, and you have this, uh, th th this, this task, this goal, as um, desirable, and it, in many cases, it's a very good, uh, uh, it's a very good activity. It's a very good goal to have. It would be one that, if you were to accomplish it, uh, it would reflect well on you as a human being. Uh, accomplishing the goal of finishing a marathon reflects on your character, not just on your physical um, abilities, but, but, but something on your, your character, at least what Plato is arguing in, in uh, book three, is that's, that's what uh, the, the physical um, activity ultimately is for. It's for a reflection of one's character. And uh, to um, be able to have a good physical representation, a good physical portrayal of your determination. That is, if you want a marathon or uh, some other physical feat to, to, to reflect your, your character, your determination, you have to have that determination in the first place. And so I think what uh, is happening is musical education, which is education of the soul, you, you will we'll, we'll say, is um, something you need to have 
in order to um, uh, ha have the physical activity um, as as a, as an image or as an icon of this, and and so I want to I want to read a little bit about or read a little bit about this in book three. Draw your attention to page eighty four of the Reeves translation or the uh, Stephanus number four hundred one b uh, and then i'm going to skip down to right around 402 but i want to read a little bit of this right here right up front uh, so he's, he's talking about the poets and what the poets are capable of doing is as, as he says they're capable uh, of embodying the image of a good character in their poems so a poem you could think as 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 a as a as a written or spoken um, thing is capable of embodying uh, an image or imaging uh, a character, a type of character. And where this where this goes is uh, music does this as well. So music, the uh, uh, the the music you listen to is a, is a type of um, Icon. It's a it's a type of manifestation, physical manifestation, of character, and we all know this. Even if we've, we've never stopped to, to think about this, the uh, fact that music can elicit different emotions. Some music calms us. Other music excites us. Uh, some music is dark. Other music is bright. Uh, we have this very complex uh, physical representation of the um, the inner life of of the soul, and so what what a what a musician or a composer um, is capable of is making that um, that music affect or permeate, as Plato puts it. Uh, the the soul so that it forms the soul uh, to 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 receive this type of formation a good a good formation if you want a good character you have to um, encounter and be affected by good characters and this can happen through literature through poetry and it can also happen through music so here's how here's how Plato puts this up just right before 402a um, Socrates says, then aren't these the reasons, Glaucon, that musical training is most important? First, because rhythm and harmony permeate the innermost element of the soul, affect it more powerfully than anything else, and bring it to grace. Such education makes one graceful if one is properly trained, and the opposite if one is not. Okay, so for the fir the first thing that um, music music does uh, is that there's a rhythm and a harmony, which permeates, uh, as he as he says, the uh, innermost element of our soul. So music can kind of take take control of us, take over our our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions. It can it can motivate. It can depress. It can, you know, it's sort of like a, a spirit that's breathed into us. So music has this ability to affect us um, more than anything else, he says, um, and bring it grace. It can it, it can actually be a gift. Music can be a gift to us. Uh, you feel inspired when you listen to certain songs. You feel like you have strength um, uh, because of certain music. And this is this is to be formed well, um, even if you don't know why this is inspiring this music if you don't know why this is um uh, um you know good for you uh it's still the case that it is um just as <clears throat> switching switching modes here to the physical education side of things um you know if you're if you're uh if you have to walk to uh, uh to school every day as a child or if, if you play sports uh, as a child um, this is good for you. This is good, even if you don't know 
like why this is good, it's still forming you. It's making you a better human being. Uh, hopefully, as we'll see, the, the goal is at some point you'll come to understand that there is a reason, there's a logos, there's a logic behind why this music is good for humans, human formation, why this uh, physical activity is good for human formation, uh, and the relationship between the two. But but early on in, in childhood, you don't need to know why it's the case as long as you receive it. Uh, and once you receive that good formation, you're then able later on in life to reflect on, or as Plato puts it a couple of pages later, to remember uh, that formation that you have already received. You can understand what you are uh, after having received a good education, uh, which is a paradoxical thing that you need education in order to uh, come to know yourself. Um, so so it's, it's a type of grace, it's a type of gift that you aren't in control of, namely this musical education. It's, it's, it's given to you. Um, and if you don't receive this, then what Plato is saying is you're not going to uh, be able to understand um, yourself. You're not going to be able to understand and identify what's good and what's not good. Um, or at the very least, it's going to be more difficult to do that. Uh, another example, better, uh, the, the more you are acquainted with good examples of character, say through reading novels or through your friends or your parents or your siblings, suppose they, they have uh, good lives, they, 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 they set good examples for you, the easier it will be for you to make decisions that are good about your own life. Also, the easier it'll be for you to identify which lives are good, that is, which you see someone, uh, you, can, uh, you can give an appraisal of, of that life, that type of life, because of those are examples you've had earlier on. They're, they're, they become something like paradigms uh, that you use to evaluate, to kind of hold up, to, to, to get an understanding about uh, the, um, the the value of, uh, a, of a type of life. <clears throat> okay, and then the second thing, which uh, I actually just alluded to, the second thing uh, Socrates says right around 402a is second, because anyone who has been properly trained will quickly notice if something has been omitted from a thing, or if that thing has not been well-crafted or well-grown. And so, since he feels disgust correctly, he will praise fine things, be pleased by them, take them into his soul, and through being nourished by them, become fine and good. Okay, so to receive this training, um, allows you to identify um, what's lacking in in people and even to a certain extent what might be lacking in yourself because you've seen it in another um, and so that allows you to um, have control over your own life uh, but you can only do that if you've seen the good in another and this is something that musical training does is it is it gives you it it it, it offers you um, places within you this paradigm of of proper order, proper virtue. Um, the, 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 the way to think of music is it's a type of harmony, a uh, type of harmony that aims um, towards a goal. Uh, and and this, this harmony is you know quite literally um, the, the way that the, the notes come together with the right tempo and the right dynamics like we were discussing in the last episode. But in, in, um, in the human life, we get a better understanding of what it is to exist harmoniously when we have experience of harmony, physical encounter, physical uh, uh, experience of harmonious being. And music is a perfect example of that. And then we can also, this is the, the point he's making, notice 
when we encounter something that is disharmonious and we can become disgusted by the disharmony of that thing, uh, even if it's not initially or primarily, I mean, I don't want to say primarily, not um, uh, initially uh, known to, uh, known. we don't know why it's disharmonious, but we can uh, have some 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 feeling some 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 gut reaction uh, to its disharmony and and it becomes uh, um, becomes known in a in a in a real um, interior sense and so then uh, here's how here's how it ends uh, the, this quotation from Socrates 402a what is ugly or shameful on the other hand he will correctly condemn and hate while he is still young, before he is able to grasp the reason. This is just exactly what we were saying. And because he has been so trained, he will welcome the reason when it comes and recognize it easily because of its kinship with himself. This is a beautiful passage in that what it presents to the reader is that like knows like similarities are drawn to similarities and uh what what i think is so uh, profound about this is that you will come to know the reason if you incarnate the reason if the reason uh is already in your soul through this musical education then an understanding or the logic of the reason uh, in an explicit manner will come to light uh, because in some ways you were already acquainted with it. You already know it. In one sense, uh, what you're trying to then do uh, after you've already received this musical education is you're trying to make what's implicit in, in in your life, in your soul, you're trying to make that explicit you're trying to bring it out present it so that you can get a clearer understanding of why this is a good life um, and I think this is um, a, one of the functions of now transitioning to physical education one of the functions of physical education is that what it what it does is it is it takes that same um, training the musical training that that harmony that you've learned through the musical training, and it it um, it crafts this the 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 the, um, the body it crafts the individual physical life um, to become an, a sign or an icon of that. So the way to think of this, uh, I believe, is the type of harmony that you experience through musical training, that form is then reformed in a physical physical way, which is the the forming of myself so that I conform to that same harmony. Now, it's it's an analogy in, in a sense because I'm not literally making my life a piece of music, um, but what I am doing is I'm making my life harmonious. Uh, and so uh, there's no possible way to make my physical life harmonious unless I have already encountered what it is to be harmonious. Uh, and so I get the form uh, from music, which I then try to incarnate in uh, a physical activity. Uh, and this this is something that uh, going back to the original example at the beginning of this episode of of say um, marathon running, there's a type of determination, a type of uh, perseverance that gets incarnated uh, and known uh, through the physical activity, right? So what it is to to have perseverance, what it is to be determined um, for you, becomes clear once you engage in this marathon training program. You understand yourself as uh, um, a determined individual, uh, a, 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 an individual with fortitude, 
because of this physical training. So the physical training makes yourself known to yourself. You become known uh, through this physical training. And it's, it's, a, it's not just a, a test. Am I really um, uh, uh, virtuous? Do I really have fortitude? It's not just a test. Rather, it is a, um, it is a showing. It is a revelation. And in, in a sense, it's an incarnating. It's a making real of that virtue. Um, right? So how does the virtue of charity get uh, made real? How is the virtue of charity actually incarnated? It's through the activity of an individual. It's by laying down one's life. Uh, you, you wouldn't have charity if you didn't do those physical acts of sacrifice for another, those acts of love for another. Likewise, you wouldn't have self-determination if you didn't do physical acts of uh, self-determination. And so it, it's a way of not just testing, but a way of living and and making oneself uh that way right because that's what the that's what the harmony or that's what the virtue is virtue is supposed to be enacted uh not just supposed to be enacted we can say even something stronger uh it virtue is for enacting right it's 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 um it it has as its goal activity uh so this uh this this ordering or directionality of the musical training into the physical training uh, is returning to what we talked about in the last uh, episode um, indicative of there being not a an, an opposition between the body and the soul uh, but rather something like a mirror the the um, the body mirrors the soul it's the image of the soul. It's the picture of the soul, or, or maybe better yet, it's the incarnation of the soul. The body incarnates the soul uh, in a way that it's not to say these are different things, um, right? Uh, the ink on the page uh, incarnates the word, uh, right? And, and it's not like the ink and the word are... Um, entirely unrelated um, disunified things the ink and the word have to be understood uh, as one and this this has significant philosophical consequences but it has really significant theological consequences because I think this is this lies at the heart of understanding the incarnation as well so that um, the that that the son is uh, not just this thing opposed to this man that was uh, uh, born in Bethlehem, but but rather uh, there is a real unity between the God and the man. Um, it's not like that, it's not just simply that the man is a, an image in an extrinsic uh, way so that this is a man and he just tells us things about God, but rather there really is a type of intrinsic unity between the man and the God, the man and the second person of the Trinity, such that there is one person there. And I think that is analogous to what is, is happening here, uh, leading into, or maybe leading back uh, into this discussion of platonic hylomorphism, where the image, uh, the physical image of something, uh, the body, it's a it's a physical representation or a physical incarnation of harmony, which just is the soul. So it's the physicalizing of the soul. It's the making of making physical of the soul, um, and and it's not an extrinsically or an externally related thing, but its relationship is internal. The soul and the body are internally related. Uh, and I think that's that's the, the idea you get through this discussion of the physical and the musical training 
or education both uh, pointing you towards the same end, which is an understanding of of goodness. Uh, and this this is something that is going to bear itself out um, in politics, but also in ethics, in an understanding of the good of, of, of the state and an understanding of the good of the individual. The harmony is ultimately going to be the same in form. Um, and, and this ultimately, as we see in book three, comes through an education from childhood. That is, we receive this truth or receive this order before we even know it. And what we then try to do is we try to then make our actions reveal to ourselves that education which we have already received.